not compatible right? um it's been long since i did a sit down video with you all um so i want to say first of all i want to say welcome back to my old subscribers my old subbies and if you're new here welcome to you welcome to my youtube channel my name is glory and i create content around my faith my lifestyle and very soon we'll be creating content around nursing um right now i'm a university student at the thompson rivers university in kamloops and i am studying biological sciences as an undergraduate for now or right now so yeah that's a little bit of background for those of you who are new to my channel and you know, you want to know who i am what i do what this channel is about um I'm actually thinking of like adding an intro to my videos, like, you know, doing just like a little intro, just like what I just did, because, um, you know, not everybody comes across my first YouTube video, right? And people just, you know, see most likely the recent ones and they click on it and, you know, they just want to know what you're all about. So, yeah, that's it for you guys. I'll be doing a video on the challenges that I have faced since coming to Canada. Um, I remember in the old video, in the description, if you read what I wrote, you guys should read my description. Um, I said I was going to be, be doing a video on these challenges I faced since coming to Canada. And I said I will be hot with you guys, which means honest, open, and transparent, right? Um, that's something that my thought is, I don't know. So I really like it. Um, honest, open, and transparent. So I'm not going to be hiding anything like yes i would be choosy with my words but i would say what i really mean and i would i wouldn't like hide how i feel about some certain things or like you know things that i have come across challenges that i have faced since coming to canada um yeah they're just like they're, they're not so much i think they're about like five or six that i pinpointed right um these things have just been coming to my mind over time so sometimes i would just like you know oh this is part of what i should do like put up um the video or the content so i just quickly wrote them down before starting this video because they've just been in my mind and i didn't just want to rely on that so i wrote them down quickly and i noticed that they're not even so much but they are major things that i have faced as a person since coming to canada yeah so let's just get into the video um so the first thing first challenge i faced I don't know if everybody faces but first challenge i personally faced and these these challenges are relative they are subjective to me right yeah the challenges are really they're relative and also they are subjective they may be challenges to me um that's why i say they're relative they may be challenges to me and not be like a challenge to another person so it's relative i consider them a challenge to me and it's also subjective even if i say it's a challenge to me you have your opinion to you it may not be a challenge right so yeah so it's relative and subjective um so the first thing for me was fitting in right um i remember that before i came here before i came to canada one of the things i was really doing whilst i was making physical preparations right one of the really important things i i sought to do was to make mental preparations also because i knew if you watched my videos before I came to Canada, I think there was a particular video when I was talking about, you know, getting myself mentally prepared because I just knew that um, moving to a new environment, since I had experienced it before whilst I was in Nigeria, I was schooling in a state university, like in a federal university, but then, you know, in the one that was in the village or like something like that. And then I, have to, I had to move to the one in the city and I saw the challenges I faced. So I knew since I was going to change my environment again, I knew that something... I knew it was not going to be easy right so i and even if i knew i was coming to a place where the system is working everything is fine i just knew that even if physically i wouldn't have any challenge mentally i would have challenges right so also like you know things like settling in getting to know your environment getting to know how the system works things like that so i was preparing myself mentally you know telling myself that it wouldn't be easy even if the whole thing canada is canada it's beautiful everybody wants to move to canada but you can't be carried away with that you would face challenges of fitting in you would face challenges of you know trying to belong 
it's not like I'm someone that tries to fit in or tries to belong, but I just feel like, I don't know, in some type of way, everybody feels that way when you move into a new environment. You want to not stand out like you get. I don't even know, I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say, but you you want to try and, you know, get to know how the system works as fast as possible. So, and in trying to do that, you do not want to draw attention to yourself, right? So that's what I mean. Fitting in was a problem to me. Um, I would give you like an example. Uh, like I had, I took sociology. Sociology was part of the courses I took in winter. And in that sociology, it was sociology, uh, sociology 12, 10. Yes. And in that sociology, um, my teacher, she is someone who likes class discussions and I love it because I love it. It makes me learn really, really well. I love talking also. So it was also an avenue for me to, you know, also get to know my, my, uh, classmates. Right. Yeah. So it really helps like bond the class together. But at first, like during the first few weeks when I noticed, because every class has a class, every, in every class we do like two or three small group discussions. She would give us some questions on the board and we would watch like two or three videos and based on those videos would give answers and our opinions to the questions. So once we watch the videos, would she, you know, she would divide us into small groups, we would discuss and, you know, based on the videos, give answers to those questions. So, um, yeah, that was, it was really fine with me. I loved the discussion and stuff. But then when, then when we come back, like when we came back to, you know, after everybody had discussed and she wanted to hear our opinion, and it was time, you know, she would ask each group, oh, what do you think about this? Oh, what do you think about this question? You know, even if I had something to say and I thought something, right, in the small group discussions, sometimes I would give my opinion. Sometimes I was still finding it very difficult to open up and give my opinion on things. But when, even when we came back to the class and she was talking and asking for our opinions, I would also find it very difficult to want to speak, right? Because I felt like, and this is not even relating to the fact that, oh, I'm a black person or this one, that one. I don't really care about things like that. But just personally, I just felt like, you know, I was new. I didn't know how the whole Canada thing, and I don't know how they think. I don't know, you know. All right. So, um, yeah, I was saying that, sorry, my mic got switched off or cut off. And I was talking for about like five minutes without even knowing. Okay, so um, yeah, I was saying, um, I didn't know how the culture worked. Um, and I also didn't want to say like something that was offensive, right? So I, I would not speak up at all. I would keep my opinions to myself and then I wouldn't speak up at all. And it was kind of hurting me inside because, and again, it was diminishing, kind of diminishing my self-esteem, right? I felt like even if I had something to say. I didn't feel like it was important, even if I thought it was important, right? Um, so I spoke to someone, I had a, I have a mentor actually. So I spoke to her about it and then she was like, instead of, you know, um, feeling that way. And also, you know, there were some things I was also like, you know, sociology is like a very, very um, subjective class, right? So you could get angry about some setting. It's normal. You could get angry about like views of people right that you don't you don't understand or you don't feel is right or something like that so there are some things i would also get angry at but then i would be hurting inside and i wouldn't know how to express myself not my anger but like express myself right in a in an acceptable way not acceptable but in a pleasing way right in a pleasant way so um I talked to her and she said, um, instead of doing that, instead of feeling that way and keeping your opinions to yourself, right? And I also felt like what 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 I had to say may not be intelligent, like may not make sense. So she was like, go for research, like do research on the topics that you know that you guys are going to do, like the topics in your class, because we already have the outline, right? So do research on those topics, read ahead of time. And so that when your opinion is needed, when you want to give an opinion, you're giving an opinion based on knowledge, right? Not based on what you think. Even if, like, obviously your thoughts are also important, but, like, you know that what you are saying is correct. You're not giving an information that is incorrect. So there is no place for for um, for 
due to feel not confident. There is no place for um, invalidity, or should I put it that way, right? You, do, There is no place for that. So, because you know you're speaking out of research, out of knowledge, right? So, that was one thing she advised me to do. And, yeah, so fitting in was a, was a problem for me. So, after then, I gave my opinions when I needed to. I think I was even, like, part of the people who who, you know, spoke up a lot in class, gave a lot of opinions. Sometimes she would ask questions and, you know, nobody would have anything to say. Maybe they didn't have anything to say. But if I had something to say, I would give my opinions. And I ended up doing really, really well in the class, right? Um, so, yes, fitting in was a problem. And you could also experience a problem if you come here. I would say, um, even if you do experience that problem, um, you could do what I did instead of, you know, feeling that your opinion would not matter. Speak from a place of confidence, from a place of knowledge based on the research. Because there would always be books that she would say, oh, you, your teachers would tell you to refer to. So you could speak up from there knowing that, you know, you know what you are saying. And number two would also be to be yourself, right? Um, I'm, and I'm not just saying do you. Do you be yourself, right? But not in the book sense that our generation has right now but i'm saying be yourself if you have things to say if you have opinions that that needs if you have um opinions that you feel needs to be um heard you should speak up right um because if you don't speak up other people would speak up and you would have to go with what they say even if it doesn't suit you even if you don't feel good about it right so speak up your opinion matters they spoke up so you should speak up too when it matters right so um yeah that's it number two is keeping in touch with the people from back home that's another um challenge i face i'm from nigeria right so nigeria i came in december of 2022 and that was the winter time and nigeria is nine hours ahead of canada so keeping in touch with my parents my siblings people who matter to me was a problem um so I had to make it a point of duty to intentionally keep up with them. Because if you leave it to chance, it, three weeks will pass and you've not talked to your father, you've not talked to your mother, you've not talked to your siblings, you've not talked to your friends or the people that are important to you, your mentor or, you know, people you have in your life who are important to you, your partner also, right? So, um, yes, that's a challenge that I feel like people would also face. Um, you have to make it a point of duty, be intentional about it. I remember, um, cause let like, when it's 12 noon here, it's 9 p.m. in Nigeria. It's 12 noon in Canada, but it's 9 p.m. in Nigeria because of the time difference. Right now, it's eight hours. It's it's eight hours, It's an eight hour difference because of the whole time change thing. I don't know what's happening with this <laughs> world, but yeah, um, I'm just saying uh, it was an issue. So um, I made sure that every week I would talk to my dad, I talk to my mom, I talk to my siblings also. Maybe not all of them, but. I made sure I kept in contact with my family, also my friends, um, and also my mentor, you know, my mentors, people like that were, that are really important to me. Um, and one thing that also helped me was, I know a lot of people already have this, like creating a family group chat. Um, we didn't have that, a family WhatsApp group chat. We didn't have that, so I did that. And it really, really helped, and it's still helping. I don't have to text my dad, text my mom, they text my siblings, I don't have to. My dad doesn't have to text my sister, text me then, you know. So now it helps. Um, we also joke around on the group chat. So it just, and again, I feel like it also helped our relationship. Um, I don't know. But I feel like, you know, um, that helped a lot. So if you don't have that, I think that can also help you. Um, also, um, sometimes I would, with my friends, I would, you know, text them and say, oh, when would you be free? I would be free around 12. Would you be free around 9 p.m.? So we can talk and I would make it a point of it. And sometimes I would be in school around that 12 p.m., right? But probably I didn't have class. Maybe my class, my next class maybe was around like 1 or 1.30. I would text my friend. I, I, based on the appointment we had, we had made, right? I would talk to her or talk to him around like 12 when it's like 9 in Nigeria. Because I have made it a point of duty, right, to do that and to be intentional about it. And not just leave my relationships to chance. If you leave it to chance, you would never... It would, number one, your relationships would just dwindle. Relationships are things that need to be watered in order for them to grow. 
you need to be intentional with relationships for them to grow, right? So, except you don't care about those relationships. If these are relationships that, you know, are important to you and have kept you, right? Um, it's, I don't think it's a wise thing to throw away those relationships just because you moved into a new place that you think it's better, right? So, um, yeah, stay grounded. I would say you should stay grounded. That's a really important point. Um, because sometimes you would also, sometimes because you are in a new environment, it happens, sometimes it happens un, un, unconsciously. Um, you, you are not even aware about it. You are drifting from the values that you hold dear to yourself. You are drifting from your beliefs. You are drifting from your, um, basically from your values, right? And who better to remind you about these things, about the person that you are, um, than the people who have already known you for for a while, right? They've known you, right? So um, that's why I feel like relationships are important and you shouldn't just throw them away just because you moved to a new environment. You shouldn't throw those relationships away. If the relationships that were not helping you, by all means, go ahead, you know, throw them away. But relationships that keep you grounded, relationship, family relationships, number one, um, that keep you grounded, stick to them, your friends, mentors, whoever they may be, right? Um, yeah, so number three is association. Um, this, I have had an issue with association since I came. Still do have an issue. Um, that's very vague, right? But I'll try to say it in a way that you guys can understand, from, see it from my point of view. Um, recently, I have come to understand the importance of association. It's not like I never knew the importance. Um, but you know when you keep studying about something and you know light just keeps breaking in that aspect you keep coming to a new understanding and better understanding of a certain um topic right or a certain thing a certain concept association is one of those concepts for me that recently has been opening up right um so Whilst I was coming, I knew that, oh, um, I had to prepare myself. Um, okay, yeah. So, I knew I was going to have an issue with, um, not issue, but like I, I knew that I was going to have to look at my association. Like, I, I was going to have to be careful with association when I came into Canada or when I eventually moved into Canada, right? Um, so, it was something I had, I had at the back of my mind. It's not like I was, I had it at the back of my mind. And when I came, um, it's not like I was in, I wasn't intentionally working towards it, right? So it's kind of like I, I didn't leave it to the wind, but I also didn't, I also wasn't so intentional, right, about it. Um, and it's not like I found myself in a, the, 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 the black hole and stuff like that. But um, I think I would have made better choices um if i was intentional about my association right um basically like i said i don't have in my previous video i don't really have like a lot of friends right i still don't have friends in canada <laughs> i don't I still don't have like friends right um but the reason why i say is it's a problem to me is because uh uh up to now, I still don't have like a really, really close friend, and it's not like I'm just going about looking for someone who is really, really who's going to be my really, really close friend. I, I'm someone who's okay. I'm okay being on my own. At least that was what I thought, right? <laughs> but right now, um, I'm okay being on my own. I enjoy my company a lot, um, or I'm learning to enjoy my company a lot by myself. Um, so yes so i would just say you should be careful about the association you you entangle yourself with or you find yourself in right um i'm not saying don't talk to people please talk to people socialize you know hang out i mean how would you get to know people if you don't hang out with them if you don't talk to them but i mean the people you're going to eventually bring into your close circle right people who are going to be closest to you, you 
I think every wise person should know that you should be very, very careful. Be very. Yes. So I think every wise person should know that you should be very, very careful about the people that you choose to be your friends, especially like your closest, the closest ones, right? Um, yeah. So that I will just leave that. Yeah. So I will just leave. I will leave it on that. Be careful. And I also one thing I would also say is, um, I feel like sometimes people are scared to be alone. People are scared to walk alone. But you know, it's a popular quote that I have seen everywhere. But and I'm very very you know I'm coming to be intentional about the quotes that I people are just people can just pick up and write anything on the internet and other people see it and begin to live their lives on it without even thinking about what thinking deeply about those quotes right you know people everybody has their opinions and minds so i'm someone who is like recently i am being conscious of the quotes that i pick and try to you know inculcate into my life so um this thing that people say uh uh it's better to be alone than being in the wrong crowd right or that maybe the wrong people it's to an extent, to a very, very large extent, I think that is true. In as much as association is important, right? Relationships are important. You basically, no man is an island, but in trying not to be an island, you shouldn't now drown yourself. You shouldn't, how would I put it? In trying to save somebody, don't get drowned, right? That's what, that's, yeah. I think like the whole association thing, I think that just sums it up for me because you know like i said i'm trying to be picky and choosy with my words so um that's what i'm trying to say basically the fact in trying to save somebody don't drown yourself because you want to not be alone or be seen as you don't have friends or you know you're always alone you don't hang out and things like that don't drift from the values you consider important to yourself that's what i'll say don't um don't sacrifice yourself to please other people right it's it's not worth it it's not worth it because i'm coming to see how how short not short life is long enough if you if you live it well but i'm coming to see how limited the time is that we have on earth and it's just going to be there's some things you just it's just it's, it is just not what your your energy to do you know please other people and displease yourself go against your values go against your beliefs number one it, you don't even feel right in your heart you wouldn't feel okay in your heart doing things that you know are not okay with you it it, it aches your heart in, in like in in a way you can't even explain it, it, there is a pain you keep feeling when you keep doing things that are not aligned with what you believe right i think i think that sums up the whole thing so find friends who 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 are hmm, who believe the same things that you believe right or similar things right they, they may not be exactly the some things have to be the same right some things have to be the same but not we are all different human beings right we have different opinions and beliefs and st and things like that um but find people who are similar who have similar values with you similar interests similar visions similar um beliefs right with you um it makes your life easier honestly it makes your life easier that when you are you know it makes your life easier right huh, maybe i will do like a whole video on that or or on association or you know picking your friends or things like that in it's not like i'm a pro i am not because i have made like a lot of mistakes with like friendships relationships um but we learn from our mistakes right the the mistakes of yesterday have become the lessons of today of today that's one thing i always say like when i pray i'm always like thank you father because the thank you father because the mistakes of yesterday have become the lessons for today so it's one thing I, I live by. I, you can't go back to yesterday. Those mistakes, they're in the past. <laughs> you can't go back to yesterday. The only thing you can do is to move forward. And it's something I've come to live by for the past 
two years intentionally come to live by for the past two years right um so yeah number four is <laughs> i think this is a funny one is um the problem of my accent because i even feel i don't know it may not be a problem for everybody that's what i'm saying it's subjective it's relative it's a problem for me i i feel it's a problem for me it's not like i have an accent right i have a nigerian accent an Igbo girl's accent right um and i don't know i'm not a fan of you know forming an accent or changing an accent forming my accent or trying to change my accent I don't feel comfortable in it it's not me but i also consider that other people sometimes like you guys some of you have said you don't understand what i'm saying i'm like especially if you're nigerian i don't think you should have an issue with understanding me but like if you're from other countries you would probably have an issue understanding me because i understand i'm from a different country right but also i notice like something that also affects me in my daily life still affecting me though i, I it's not like i have a problem with it right but um i'm just saying it's something i'm aware of it's an issue I, I i am aware of and i keep in mind when i'm associating associating with other people or talking to other people especially like in my place of work or something i consider that we're not from the same i have like philippines at my place of work i have chinese like sorry philippines at my place of work i have chinese people too um so um and indians too right so um these people are so those are Asians in general. So I consider that we're not from the same country. They're going to have a hard time understanding what I'm saying. And also sometimes I have a hard time understanding what they're saying. But I'm just saying it's an issue you should, you know, it's something you should keep in mind when you're, you know, talking to even like normal, like the Canadians themselves too. They find it difficult to understand what I'm saying sometimes. So I would have to try and speak the way they speak. In order for them to understand which is very strange to me it's very like i'm, I'm not saying it's strange but like it's it's not me right but like i i can't say because it's not me i won't be considerate of other people um uh i i try my best right if they don't understand what i'm saying i just i just try to make them oh this is what i'm trying to say you know and things like that yeah um accents is also is also a problem right that i have faced and one other thing too was I noticed was um, there's some things we say in I don't know Africa but I would say Nigeria there's some things to say in Nigeria or we do in Nigeria that it's kind of like a let's say a culture shock thing um, that that is, is strange here it's not the same way number one one thing that really really shocked me was the way we use this word sorry in Nigeria it's not the same way they use it here I was so shocked right because um, it had happened like a lot of times and i was wondering why people were giving me a strange reaction right in nigeria um let's say my mom is washing a cup and the cup falls down and it breaks i'm like oh sorry right here it's strange to them because you are not the cause of that they feel like you only say sorry when you are the cause of the bad thing that is happening right you are the cause of whatever issue the problem the person is facing so if a canadian was there and i said and my mom breaks the cup like while she's, she was washing or something and i said sorry the person would be like why are you telling her sorry you know why are you saying sorry <laughs> so because <laughs> i remember when i was working um my supervisor uh, she was i think she hit oh i think she was trying to pick up something or laundry or something and the laundry fell on the floor and i saw it i'm like oh sorry and she's like why are you saying sorry and i'm like oh because the clothes fell on the floor and she's like no you didn't do anything you don't have to say sorry and i'm like oh i'm like sorry that's how we say and i still said sorry again <laughs> like that's how we say it's like in nigeria we tell people sorry when you know bad things happen and, you know yeah so that's one thing i think you should also look out for i don't know it's very strange yeah so i think it's part of the culture shock um yeah and number five one two three four yeah the fifth one would be faith my faith um that's a how would i put it basically i wouldn't say uh i wouldn't say like my faith is the problem but i would say i wouldn't say my faith is the problem 
but I would just say finding a place to grow in my faith was, was, and it's still somehow of an issue to me, but, um, it's better than it was when I initially came. And yes, I know that it's Christianity, right? We all have, it's Christianity. It's one God. It's, it's one God that we all believe in, but you know, the way, uh, there's a place where your spirit just rests. I don't know. I think that's like the best explanation I would give it. There's a place where your spirit just rests. There's a place where you there's a place where you get to and you find it easy to go. You find it easy to worship, right? You find it easy to 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 grow in your faith, right? So yeah, so for now, uh I'm going to the Gateway City Church. Um it's a very nice place, very good place. Um to share the word of God, also to worship. It's a really, really good, good place. So if you are thinking of coming to Kamloops and you think maybe finding a place of worship would be, you know, it's one of the things I was also concerned about when I was coming, right? Um, so it's, yeah. So I'm just saying, if you need a place to worship, get to city churches. It's in value view here. It's a little bit far, but yeah. Get to city church is good, and also there's also like I said, there's also redeem. Uh, there's redeem. Yeah, there are two redeem churches also. Um, there's one in downtown, downtown, and then there's one in North Shore. So depending on where your faith rests, where your spirit rests, where you feel like you you are growing, right? That's the important thing that you are in a place where you grow. You are in a place where you are growing in your faith with God, in your relationship with God. That's the most important thing. That's the most important thing, right? Um, number five, and I think this is the last one, would be... Yeah, one of the challenge. I don't think this one is a challenge, but I'm just saying... Uh, it's okay. I think it's something that everybody faces everywhere. It's something... It's a general thing. Building relationships take intentionality and work. I don't know. I didn't find it so tough to do that when I was in Nigeria. That's why I put it as a challenge here. I didn't find it so tough to build relationships when I was in Nigeria because I was, will I say, most of the people I knew were on, not, yeah, most of them, you know, were on my, let's say on my level, were on the same level or playing, we're on the same plane in life, we're on the same level, right? Like, I didn't have people who were married as my friends. I didn't have people who, who, who were, let's say, working as my friends, right? So my friends were, were all like students, right? We were still in school and stuff. So it was easy for me to keep up with them because I see them every day. You can text, things like that. But here, the people I know, or let's say my friends here, I don't have I don't have like close friends, but you know I told you I have people who I talk to, I associate with. I also have people I have people I can call my friends, right? They are not strangers to me. So um, so here I noticed that you have to be I have to be intentional. Like we don't see ourselves every day. I'm working, they are working. Um, even whilst we're in school, I have different classes. They are in different classes. Um, when we come back, they're probably doing the assignment. I'm doing my assignment at home. So we are we're not except we are taking the same class together, we will most likely not get to see each other if we don't put the time or we if we are not intentional about seeing each other. That's what I mean, right? So um yeah to keep relationships here, that's what I've noticed. To keep relationships here, you would have to be very, very intentional. And I don't mean, you know, always spending money, but that's nice. I feel like that's also a way, you know, you can build your relationships. Like on the weekends, if you're not working, maybe on a Sunday or on a Saturday, you can, you know, just go out and have dinner with your friend. Or you don't even have to have dinner. Go out, take a walk, um, go somewhere, explore the city. And whilst you're exploring the city, you're talking, right? You're building your relationship. And that way your relationships are building. You're not leaving them to chance, right? Um... This one now is not the relationship. It's not like relationships back at home. This are, this this one now is like relationships here with you, the ones you have, you have 
come to start in Canada or like in your new environment or where you are. Um, you don't expect those relationships to grow on their own, right? So, yeah, but I'm just saying here or when i say here in canada is what i've noticed i i have i have to be more intentional about building my relationship i have to put in more work that's what i'm saying i have to put in more work i can't just stay at home and think my relationship will go i would have to yeah and <laughs> resources too would go into it because i mean if you're inviting your friend out for dinner you gotta pay for dinner except your friend is you know except your friend is someone who say oh don't worry let me pay and stuff like that but like you know um it's, it's it's basic courtesy if you're inviting someone out for dinner you gotta pay for dinner so yeah so sometimes the resources will go into it but that's what i'm saying it's intentionality relationship is work you have to put in the work um yeah and sometimes you don't have to you don't have to go out you can also go to their houses chill you know chill you guys can chill cook or maybe order pizza watch a movie together I mean, you're going these friendships, right? Um, that's better than leaving it to chance. <sighs> so basically, yeah, I think this video, I don't want it to be so long. It's probably going to be like 30 minutes <laughs> of sitting down and talking. But I think it's worth it um, just to prepare your mind in case you face any of these challenges, right? Um, yeah. Let me know, yeah, right? You guys that are also like, already in a new environment let's say you moved or something it, may, it doesn't have to be canada maybe you're in zimbabwe you're in uh, in ethiopia wherever you are just let me know in the comments what you also faced or what you also thought was a challenge for you that i did not mention and also let me know what you think about like you know the challenges that i mentioned um let them be uh let your comments be constructive because if your comments are destructive best believe i'm not listening to you best believe i would not even give you eye that's how we say it in nigeria i will even put my mind where you are so be constructive with your comments in as much as yes i i like asking guys for i like asking you guys for your opinions and your comments and i, I know sometimes you know it's not always going to be a positive comment but you can be wise in the way you construct your criticism right be wise don't yeah you, you get what i'm saying so i hope you guys um liked this video um i know it would it, i know it would really help right um yeah so the next video the next two videos would be like a, like the whole videos right the remaining whole videos i'm so happy that the whole is done like like i told you fashion is not my thing so like you know that's the thing when you are doing things that are that don't naturally come to you it takes you more more um it takes more effort and more um this thing from you more energy from you than when you are doing what naturally comes to you right that uh, generally in life right um so fashion is not my it's not my forte even if i like to look good right i look good but it's not something i would want to do as a profession right um so that's why I'm like, I'm, I'm so happy that the haul is done. <laughs> I've shot the videos. Um, I've also edited them. I I did them before I did this video, right? But since I promised to put up this video before any other haul, I didn't want my video, my my recent videos to be haul, 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 haul. <laughs> so that's why I had to do this sit down video um, before I put like the remaining two hauls. So yeah, the fashion overhaul and the, and the um, cider haul are like the remaining videos. So yes. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and would enjoy the next two videos I will put up and my other content. Um, subscribe if you're not subscribed. I noticed that like for my analytics, a lot of you that watch my videos, hmm, that's a lot of you, but like more than half of you are not subscribers. But you enjoyed the video. Why not subscribe? Why not subscribe? Subscribe, right? Um, yeah, it would... Your, your subscription obviously is what keeps me going right it's yeah it's what keeps me going right um to know that there are people out there that are waiting for my content that enjoy watching my content right yeah have a great weekend we're going we're getting into the weekend have a great weekend and 
yeah see you guys when i see you guys next bye